So I would love a follow-up video on sports card investors. You know, he's go to all these conventions and the video title is I spent 50,000, I spent 90,000, I spent 20,000, I held $50 million of cards. Uh, one of the things that really pisses me off about his episodes is when he asks the owner of the card. I remember he was asking the owner of a LeBron James, I think exquisite rookie card, what do you value the card at? And the owner's like, oh, I wouldn't even take a million. Well, I mean, that's the owner of the card. If anyone were to be biased and overvalue the card, it would definitely be the current owner of the card, right? So that would not be a realistic expectation of the card. What is realistic is if it went to an auction, everyone knew about it, and then people bid on it, where did it end up? And that's why auctions, in my opinion, even eBay auctions, as long as they get the right promotion and people know it, it's, it's going on, is they actually a very good indicator of how much the card is worth because it's basically everyone out there bidding on the card if they want to. Now, one of the things that I really have to criticize Sports Card Investor on was, you know, I, I've already kind of talked about his app, but also just the demeanor of it. You know, when it's okay, like Jeff is a very wealthy individual. He clearly is a multimillionaire. He's very wealthy. He has, he can make big investments, right? And he can go and spend this type of money at the convention. That's why these videos are so, get so many views because he's going to a convention and he's just, Spurging money, like it's kind of like, oh man, I wish that I was Jeff, right? Type of scenario where you wish that you had that type of money. And he convinced a lot of people who were very poor to act and behave outside their means. And this is called, this becomes dangerous when suddenly they lose their money. So Do Kwan, you know, I don't want to keep hitting the Do Kwan, but it is the same idea. Do Kwan convinced a bunch of idiots, you know, lunatics if you want to use Do Kwan's own verbiage, that he is a messiah and you should just listen to him and buy his coin. So people bought his coin, it went to zero, and now they're contemplating suicide and even one of them who lost $2 million visited Do Kwan's previous home. Do Kwan doesn't live there anymore, he lives in Singapore or something, Philippines, he's moving country to country, right? And he doesn't understand that like Do Kwan is a, I mean he had, I think 300 or 200 Bitcoins, Bitcoin valued right now around 30,000. He'll be okay. Monetarily wise, Do Kwan is in no financial difficulty. He lives in the best hotels. He's eating lobster and steak every day. He has money from the Bitcoins he used to, and how did he buy these Bitcoins? He bought them from the, the people buying the base token, right? So they put their money in and he used their money to buy Bitcoin for himself. Do Kwan will be fine. No one needs to worry about Do Kwan's financials. He will be, he is set, he is generationally set. He, him and his family and his daughter Lunar, which is named after coin, they will be set their entire lives. They will never have to work. It is the common man who believed in the financial freedom, the dream that you could get 20% return on this coin and is the common man Jeff Wilson owes an apology to. These are the people who took credit cards out. These are the people who, actually I think Roth's cards is watching one of his videos. He seems like a nice guy, but he's telling you, you can put the card on credit and then flip it while it's still on credit on your credit card. This is a very, this is their mentality. This is why they think it's okay because they're being told it's okay to, hey, put a card on a credit card, you have 90 days to pay, and then by the time 90 days happens, a card is tripled in price. Hey, easy peasy, right? But it's dangerous. This game is incredibly dangerous, and the reason the credit cards are going to let you do this is because they, they own you after. They own your ass. It's the same with payday loan vendors. It's like, why would anyone give really bad credit? Why would anyone give money to people with really bad credit? and who are likely to default is because then they can charge them fees and interest and all these things for life. Payday loans are one of the worst things in existence. I mean, it's basically, in my opinion, a way to, I, I, I use the word, I don't use the word lightly, enslave people to a debt program they can never get out of. Because they're so busy paying the interest and the fees, they can't even pay, it's the same with student loans, right? I mean, it's predatory at the very least. 
So here you have Jeff Welch saying, hey guys, you know, I'm gonna promise you, you know, I'm gonna talk about financial freedom. If we all buy these cards and we hype them up and everyone's positive, we're all gonna make a bunch of money. Do you think Jeff is hurting for money? I mean, he just spent $400,000 on a plastic stand and a, you know, a plastic slab, plastic protector for your slab. That's so many purposes if you intentionally throw, chuck your slabs around which I don't understand because if your slab ever gets damaged, you just go to PSA or BGS and they replace it for you. So I'm not sure what the slab, the slab is supposed to protect the card. And even if the slab gets damaged, you just get a new one, right? So a slab protector, what's the point? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, what is the point of producing more plastic? This feels like the anti-environmentally friendly. I feel like this is really bad. There's a plastic stand that you, you put your you put your PSA graded card in and you display it at your home. God forbid somebody steal it, right, from you, right? I mean, I know what I wanna do with my $200,000 cards. I wanna not put them in a safe or a bank deposit. I wanna put them around my home in little cheap plastic displays you can get in China for a penny a piece. That was one investment. And then the other investment was even worse in my opinion. It was plastic around a slab like th you can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is, and th that was four hundred thousand dollars to like own part of these companies. Like, who is like? So, so I'm I'm just saying he is not the fact that he has four hundred thousand dollars to invest in these two companies means by default means that he is not hurting for money right now. But a lot of people are. A lot of people are upset. They're disappointed. And you know, hey, hey, like this. Part of it is your responsibility. It's like when you go to a casino and you lose money, you can't really blame the casino, right? But if you said, if people told you, like, hey, this casino, and we wrap it up, looks like Morgan Stanley, or you know, uh, it looks like Lehman Brothers, not a great example. It looks like Merrill Lynch, right? If, if the, instead of the casino, it was a Merrill Lynch, we had covered the casino to make it look like a Merrill Lynch. And people were in you know, nice suits and ties, and then you walk in and you're like, hello, hello, Mr. Smith. You know, we're going to put your investment to work. We're going to put your money in an investment. We're going to put it to work. Then I think I have the problem. And that's kind of where I have the issue is when you call, when your channel's name is Alpha Investments or Sports Card Investor, Comeback Investor, there's the idea when your app is called Market Movers, Right? What's the market? The stock market. When people think market movers, what do they think? They probably think it's some type of stock market. And when you say that these cards are going up every day based on, you know, hey, this pitcher had a good game, this hitter had a good hit, you know, he hit the cycle. That's where I have an issue because that's just not true. Cards do not move up day to day based on how the player pay played yesterday. It doesn't make sense. The cards are longevity, especially sports cards. How many championships you win, how many you know MVPs and so on. And if you're a GOAT, it's not like, oh wow, Luca won a game last night against Grizzlies. Now his you know stock has gone up a little bit. And there was another thing, and I warn you about this. It was called Sports Card Index. And again, it had this idea of a stock market. It went belly up because it used the exact model that Jeff Wilson is trying to use. It was for soccer players. So you could buy soccer players, they would mint you tokens, and it would sell you tokens. There's another program called Soria or something for football players. It's, it's soccer, it's soccer, soccer players. And, oh, football, football, uh, football index. Football index was what it was called. And it had the same concept. And the reason it didn't work was if the stock goes up, and they're paying out these dividends, eventually the company runs out of money. And here's the problem. Eventually people who cannot afford to buy these cards and hold them long-term run out of money. And when you run out of money, you have to sell them for whatever you can get and you're probably not alone. When there's a catastrom catastrophic event, cat catastrophic, catastrophe, so what's the kind of, okay whatever event it happens that's when people have to sell and you're not going to be alone when Matt when more people I every single day I go on LinkedIn I have 50,000 
followers on LinkedIn. If you add my you know, fan pages, it's already like 58,000. So I go on LinkedIn and every day I see another layoff, another layoff, another layoff. There was a company that, you know, buy now, pay later for millennials or like Generation X. That company just laid off 10% of its staff. It's an app where, <laughs> where it's like long-term interest. It is brutal right now. And people are gonna lose their jobs and they're gonna just have their cards. And instead of having stocks or cash or, you know, putting you know, a home, maybe they put more money in a home payment, they paid off their mortgage or they paid off your auto loan. They just have some Giannis and Zion cards. And they're gonna find out really fast that to sell in a down market is one of the most, I don't like doing it. I buy in the down market, but I don't even like doing it. It feels greasy. I don't even like it. You know, I mean, I, it's like, you know, um, I'm gonna say like, nobody wins. I don't know, I guess nobody wins because I, I win, right? Because I buy a card cheap, but Nobody feels good about it. Like when I buy a collection on the cheap, which is not even cheap, I always use buy list. It's always fair. It's market price for whatever that collection. I, I offer higher than anyone would ever offer because I, I match whatever they offer and then give you a premium if it's something I want. If it's not, then I'll just give you the same exact matching offer that you could find. Um, but I don't even feel good. I mean, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good when you hear about the stories of, oh, I'm getting evicted, I have four kids, you know, oh, you know, I just lost my job, I, you know, I don't have any money. You shouldn't be investing in sports cards. I mean, it, it's ludicrous for the average American to think of this as an investment. It is not. It, it is not. And I don't care how many people tell me it is, it's it just not. For the ordinary person, it is not. For the Jeff Wilson's who are the multi-millionaires, yeah, they can, they can take it. They can, I think it's more, even at that level, it's more akin to gambling. But, hey, if you have the money to gamble and you have the money to lose, you're in a much better position than when you don't have the money. I mean, would you ever go to casino and you actually owe money. You owe money for mortgage, you owe money for rent, you owe money for auto loan, and you're thinking, you know what? I can double my money in casino. That is gonna go very poorly for you. Long term, that will go poorly because the casino always has an edge. Maybe once in a while you win and you double your money and now you can, you can pay all your bills and now you have the ability to buy a Zion card. I don't think you know we should view this as an investment. I think we should view this as gambling because it has more up, I mean, it looks more like gambling to me. <laughs> Guys, 